Christian Chat TV with Cheeses of Europe. I am so honored to be here with Charles Duke, who is the Managing Director for North America of Cheeses of Europe. Bienvenue à Chicago. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And it's so exciting to share the sampling experience with you, dear foodie Facebook friends. Can you, first of all, share with us about this beautiful cheese board and cheese plate? So we have five different cheeses here on this cheese board. We have a brie, raclette, comté, mimolette, and fondant These cheeses are all present because they have different textures, different colors, uh, they have different intensity and flavor. So we want to create a nice cheese board that you can recreate at home and share with your friends. Oh, this is fantastic and magnifique, as is your so tagline. Yes. <laughs> so this is all part of the Cheeses of Europe campaign, which is um, promoting here, promoting French cheeses uh, to the consumer. And, you know, I found that a, a lot of American consumers are a little bit intimidated by French cheeses. I think they don't know how to pronounce the names, Their the price points can be high sometimes. So this campaign is really all about uh, making it more accessible and to show how we can use it every day and um, use it in simple recipes that will elevate them. Uh, you know, you can make a mac and cheese with a mimolet and it really makes it, it comes up a notch, a couple of notches. Really to enhance the flavor profile right. and expand your palate. And that's what it's all about, discovering and the flavors and savoring the flavors as well. And you're right, I think some people, myself included, can get a little intimidated about do you serve the brie with or without the, the brine and, and each of the others. Could you give us a little 411? And if you have questions, please just type them in. This is your chance to visit here with the cheese guru of the cheeses of Europe with Charles and we'll make sure we get any questions you have answered. So with Brie and if we could maybe highlight some different dishes and also on cheesesofeurope.com you can actually get recipes for these wonderful cheeses and for the chefs too. You feature the recipes, chefs. Yeah, we have some great recipes. Um, they're very simple. For example, I mentioned the, um, the mac and cheese, some of the information that we have on the website too. And, and here are some of the, um, of the recipes. A simple burger, let's say with, with some blue cheese really highlights the, uh, the taste of, uh, the meat and, and brings it up a notch as well. You can create a, what else do we have? A Juicy Lucy with a Manchala cheese. Uh, so there's really a lot of variety in all these. We paired up with a number of, um, chefs. Uh, that have been on Top Chef and on various celebrity shows where um, they've really given it their time to share with us uh, their recipes using French cheeses. That's terrific. And actually, if you could download on kitchenchat.info, my kitchen chat with Chef Kristen Salini. She's on the Food Network and she provides a wonderful recipe for the bacon wrap date with, with um, some blue cheese. Yes, some delicious blue cheese. Yes. So this is great. And so I want to share with you also the PDO, what, what PDO yes. means. And, and this seal is uh, on many of the cheeses of uh, Europe that you'll see uh, at the stores. Uh, it refers to a uh, protected designation of origin, hmm. which means that the cheese is produced in a certain area uh, following age-old traditions, uh, using a specific breed of cattle that can only feed uh, in a certain area. So that really brings the cheese to its place of origin, its terroir, which is the name in French of what the land represents and how the land really imparts uh, flavors and characteristics to the cheese. So those, that symbol is very important. It also, you know, is a way for the people and the farmers and the dairy farmers to continue their legacy and the traditions that have made these cheeses so wonderful throughout the ages. That's wonderful. It's almost like a, a mark of champagne in a way, right, yeah. where it's a very prestigious and, and really refers right. to Champagne is the same thing. It could only be made in that area, and that's why you know champagne can only be made in champagne. So that's a great example. Wonderful. And of course, champagne pairs very well with... <laughs> champagne pairs very well with creamy cheeses like this brie, for instance. You know, you, you, you have this creaminess in your mouth and the champagne or or even the acidity of some white wines really uh, uh, cleanses the palate, so it's a, it's a very nice experience in mouth. 
Yes, and a quick thank you shout out to Biddy's Beverage, who is providing the wine pairings for today's yes. sampling. And pastoral for all the wonderful yes. treats that we're sampling today. Yes, merci beaucoup yes, <laughs> for <pastoral>. that. <laughs> and if we could um, provide the, the viewers also some information about how you arrange the progression of the cheese and the flavors. So that's important too. You want everybody to experience the flavors as they go through the board. So you want to start off with the mildest cheeses, in this case the brie, and finish with the strongest cheeses, which is usually the blue cheese. Um, so this progression, as we've been sampling this afternoon, goes from mildest to strongest. Great. And you really can tell the, the progression of yes. it, the creaminess here, and then I, I love Raclette. Raclette's this great. was so good. And can you share with us about the skiers of Europe? So our Facebook... Well, this is a, a big cheese uh, in the mountains, uh, and especially during the winter holidays when a lot of the French people go skiing, they usually uh, have a famous dish called raclette, which is uh, raclette cheese melted onto potatoes, onto charcuterie, and it's a great cheese for upper ski and uh, gives you a lot of energy. Right, but but it's too early to think about this in the summer. <laughs> right. The winters come too quickly in Chicago, yeah. <laughs> as we all know. So this the cheese is without season. You can serve it any season, any way. Yes. And do you have a special favorite recipe with a certain cheese that you particularly enjoy? Uh, I love blue cheeses. So uh, a burger with blue cheese for me is great. I like it in salads. I like it um, with a little bit of honey for, for those people who don't like the pungency. Uh, a little bit of honey goes a long way. Um, so yeah, che blue cheese for me is great. Right, and I think I'm gonna try mimolette, mimolette yep, for mimolette. the macaroni and cheese. I think the color is just so beautiful. Yes, the color's gorgeous. It comes from a seed called annatto, um, and this cheese is is a nice hard cheese. It looks like, like, a, like a cantaloupe uh, yes. when it's whole, and it's sold usually in three different ages, a young one, an old one, and an extra old one. And the extra old one, you know, as it ages, it develops these butterscotch flavors, which are which are lovely. Oh, that is. Well, all of this is lovely. Make sure that you check out cheesesofeurope.com. Also on kitchenchat.info for a podcast with Chef Kristen. And also we will be featuring a blog and Kitchen Chat very shortly as well on kitchenchat.info. I'd love to hear from you. Please send pictures, comments about what you like to pair with cheese and what you like to make with cheese. And if you've tried any of the cheeses of Europe, it is a delicious, just a delicious celebration for your palate. And thank you so much for joining me, dear Facebook foodie friends, today on a bit of a kitchen chat on the road. And always remember to take a moment and savor the day.